Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to another Shamshir Sound video. My name is Ali Nadam. In today's episode, we're looking at one of your guys' suggestions. And uh, Josip, 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 I don't know how to pronounce your name. You said, can you please explain more in depth of leveling your sounds during your final mix? I find it very difficult to level everything. Elements such as kick, lead, sub, bass, clap, snares, tom. So essentially, he's having problems with leveling. Uh, what is the main goal? What when leveling your final mix, should all of the elements be leveled at the same dBs or is there more to it? So this is a great question. Thank you um, for the suggestion. If you guys have any requests, feel free to let me know. Now, in regards to this, we're going to tackle this from a philosophy point of view. We're going to look at this um, with an example. This is my most recent bootleg. Um, best friends ask Dimitri Vegas and like Mike Paris Hilton. Not a huge fan of the track. But nonetheless, I made like a kind of cool big room side trance edit of it. And I will show you guys what I was doing. So let's first start off with the philosophy. So I like to say that it's 50% science and 50% art. And what do I mean by that? I mean that, you know, a lot of stuff you can twist and change and bend and break the rules. But at the same time, you know, you still, you know, you have to have good drums, you have to have, you know, there are recurring trends that go on. And the proof is in the pudding, you know, when we look at a reference track, generally speaking, there's always recurring trends. If I open up like a Martin Garrix, I don't know, like a, a big room banger by Martin Garrix, you have a fat kick, you know, you have a lot of space curved out for the lead, you have a lot of common things that go on and recurring patterns, patterns that go on with the track. But similarly, you should have confidence, believe in your work. No one will believe in it more than you. Be passionate, love your sound. Now, it's not to say that you should just render white noise or just, you know, take a dump shit on your mic and just render that because, you know, I wouldn't want to hear like white noise render for five minutes because that would just drive me crazy. So you do... you. It's not to say don't put effort and don't be realistic. Be realistic, but also have an open mind. Love your work, but also be receptive to criticism to improve your work. Because it's all about, um, it's all about at the end of the day, like your music is a representation of yourself. It's a representation of your character, who you are, uh, what story you're trying to tell, what you're trying to demonstrate to the listener. Now, the listener will always interpret it their own way. If I write a track and it's about like a war of gladiators in arena, maybe someone will listen to it and think of maybe like a hardship they had in their childhood. So that's up to the listener. So before we stray too much into philosophy, we're going to talk about, um, again, these, these foundations. So generally speaking, when you're using um, effects, effects are usually very low in the mix. So I'm going to talk about some general ideas because I've watched a lot of master classes. I have... A lot of experience of listening to music like I've been listening to dance music since 2005 when I got hooked to the sounds of like Benny Benassi, Paul Van Dyke, ATB, um, a lot of the trance guys and then I got pulled into Electra House a couple years later. Now there's a lot of things that I would say general things so this is my mixer track for um, the, the bootleg that I, I made best friends ass bootleg you can check it out it's a free track and I, I organize it generally by like percussive elements. I have my synths. I have usually like vocals and more synths. And then I have effects. Now, even though these volume sliders are rocked all the way up at like default, you ultimately get to choose the volume. However, now you can choose the volume at this level, this volume knob, which is the same volume knob, which is these guys here. Okay, you can choose the level at this volume knob, which I like. I like this level adjustment and I usually do that. And I recommend to you guys, you need to do like mixing on the fly because let's say you don't, right? Let's just say you throw in a super loud clap during the break. It's just going to knock you off for when you want to make the synth. So I feel like mixing and production is kind of like, um, I, I don't really do all my mixing at the very end. I do some tweaks near the end but I'm doing mixing like simultaneously as I'm, as I'm, when I add a new sound, I find where it fits in the mix and I'll show you guys examples of that. But what I was saying was that effects are usually, they're more back in the mix. 
Um, a lot of these guys are EQ'd quite heavily. So for instance, this one says FX Ganja Riser. Um, the low end has been cut around 196. If we go to, uh, what's this one? FX, yeah. Um, again, like a lot of the low end has been cut. Now you don't have to, this one just had some weird obnoxious frequencies. So I, I cut them out in this track. Um, but the whole point is that effects are generally speaking like the background. They're really the elements in the back. And to answer his question, you know, does everything be at the same level? Absolutely not. Like, let's go ahead and play my drop, but I will play it muted so I can show you the mixer track. So we can just look at the mixer track. Okay. So let's stretch this out and let's just play this back. So taking a look, you can see here what is very dominant. The kick is hitting 0 dB, all right, nearly 0 dB. The sub is hitting around minus 6. The base, so there's a, a base layer kind of on top of the sub, is hitting around like minus 3, minus 4. The lead is also around minus 3. Okay, lead mix, yeah, minus 3. But when we look at the effects, you know, effects are are various. Like, try to build a mountain. Maybe have some stuff at, like, very low level, which I have here. Effects 007 noise. So that noise is very low level. That noise is at, like, minus 50 decibels. We have other effects here that are at, like, FX downlifter at minus 26. So ultimately, this the, the overall level of the volume is decided by you. It can be at any of those um, any of those knobs, whether it be this one or this one, or you could even leave those knobs untouched and put like a fruity balance and then decide what you want to do with the volume. It's not to say that you have to use these volume sliders. It's really up to you at the end of the day, what suits your workflow, what you like using. And, um, I'm going to now play back a bit of the track so we can get a little vibe going on. And so I can demonstrate to you guys why you wouldn't want the sub to be at the same level of the kick. That won't work. The sub has a lot of power, and I'll explain a little bit of uh, a little bit of the science behind that. So let's go ahead and just play this a little bit back. So if we play back just the, uh, let's play back just the sub, the kick, and the uh, bass. Now this, the mix down wasn't great on this uh, bootleg. It could be better, but nonetheless, I just, I wanted to put out the track. I was getting really tired of hearing uh, the voice over and over again. So if you notice here, when we play back the, let's make this wide. So if we play back the sub, I'm going to move the sub near the kick. What would happen if we made this the same volume as the kick? It would turn out really bad. Check this out. It's just, it's unnecessary because then trust me, it'll start cutting into the lead. If you're ever wondering why is the lead not being able to speak and it sounds like it's getting suffocated, chances are the sub bass will start eating its space into the lead because uh, low end frequencies take up, um, they create a lot of loudness. They create a lot of RMS. And so you have to be very careful. Generally speaking, you don't want that sub bass to be at the same level of the kick because the sub has a lot of body to it, has a lot of weight to it. And the sub will sound loud at lower frequency, at lower volume. So for instance, even there, like it could have been probably back down a lot. Let's try with the bass. And now let's introduce the lead mix and see what happens. Now these have been EQ'd a lot, so it's going to be hard to really demonstrate it taking away so much energy away from the lead. But at the end of the day, your sub 
whether it be in the break or in the drop, if you're doing like a sub channel, definitely the sub, keep in mind, it doesn't need to be at the same level of the kick. Absolutely not. Laid back Luke also talks about this, how like really one has to dominate the other. So like either have a strong kick or maybe like a not so strong kick, but like a very powerful sub bass, like bass kind of that's playing back. If I have a powerful kick like so, the sub, if it's at like zero decibels, like the kick, it's going to start robbing energy away from the kick. It's going to start robbing energy away from the lead and it'll start suffocating the other stuff. So I'm going to show you guys uh, some of the effects and I'm going to lead, I'm going to mute the lead just so that the effects can kind of be more prominent. So this is just to demonstrate to you guys that the effects, like if we just listen to only these effects, uh, the effects, they're at varying levels. And I like to kind of like build a mountain. I like to have some effects at minus 24, minus 48, whatever suits it. And so I recommend to you guys get in the habit of when you throw in an effect, assign it to a track and just start playing around with that level adjustment to find where you like it. Because this one is at like, what is that? Like minus 25, right? It would be so loud if it was at zero decibel. So loud, way too loud. I'm going to play the effects only with the kick and check out what happens if I were to crank up that downlifter volume. Check this out. All right, are you kidding me? And imagine if you did that at the very end of it. Watch. Watch what will happen if we put the lead mix. It's terrible. It takes away all the energy from, from it. So instead, back it down all the way. And find that sweet spot where it's like you just hear it kick in, right? You just hear it kick in. So I, I probably could have went higher, but I'm very conservative with the uh, a, a lot of the kind of noisy effects because I like to keep it almost like the listener doesn't know it's there but it is there. It's kind of, it plays with their psyche. It plays at an unconscious level. So a lot of those, that's how I do it, guys. I go in here, the cashmere exhaust. I go in here. This one was good. This one, again, like I said, the minus 25. This one was an uplifter. I brought it down uh, to really put it down in the mix. Because if you bring down the level, it's going to make it sound like it's more distant and more in the background rather than in the foreground, in the center. And that will make sure that the elements in the center have the attention. Because if you don't, it takes away so much energy away from it. And same with like these, like the uplifter. Imagine this, watch this. Now, let's, let's undo that. So sometimes uh, samples don't need um, a lot of EQing. Sometimes samples are ready to go. Like this one, the exhaust, I, I still brought it down, but I actually didn't EQ it. And why didn't I EQ it? You're wondering, okay, well, Ali, why didn't you EQ this one? Well, let's, let's just look at this one. You want to use your ears. You want to listen to it. And let's put a parametric EQ. You see that? There's like no low end energy. There's no low end energy. So why would I need to EQ it? You see that? There's like literally nothing around 200 hertz and, and beyond. So uh, not everything needs to get EQ'd. Some stuff is EQ'd already pretty well, even like the Avengers stuff. A lot of stuff already have some EQ. Now, it's not to say don't check, but use your ears. Use an analyzer in case you're uncertain. Um, but really, it just comes down to that leveling. Now, 
Uh, I hope I answered some of those questions, but I want to also take a, a look at uh, just showing you guys like what I would do. Like, so I, like I said, I do the mix down during my production stage, much like Dyro and a lot of other producers. Um, and I make tweaks on the fly. So for instance, um, if we look at the lead here, or let's go to something that has like, you see this, it says reduction or even this one, like this one, I brought down the sub minus, uh, minus 0.9, you know, and I could have done that at the volume slider, but I didn't because like, I like to do it with fruity ballads. And so you could have also gone into a plugin and reduced the volume here. You could also do it at any level of any of the plugins, depending on how you want to affect the signal chain, you know, uh, but if, if you're happy with the sound that you have and you want to bring down the volume afterwards, um, if it's before, of course, do it here. I recommend doing it there. It's very easy. But, you know, afterwards, why not throw on a fruity balance? Like, let's say, let's say this one. I'll show you an example. So let's say the downlifter was too loud. I would just throw on a fruity balance and I would just get it how I like it. Maybe I like it minus two decibels. Similarly, you could have also done that here, bringing it down to minus two decibels. Um, so really the leveling, will everything be the same decibels? No, absolutely not. Everything is going to be their own decibels. And the sub, don't look at it visually. It's, there's a reason why it's called engineer, because we have to use our ears. The visuals can sometimes be deceiving. They can give us an advantage, but at the same time, we might be under the impression that like, oh, look, these are all being compressed. That's what I did when I was very novice. I was like, I would just look at it and I'd be like, look, it's doing this in Ozone or it's doing this in this plugin or T-Rex or whatever. But we have to look, use our ears. Like, don't just go off of what you see with your eyes. Now, what is the main goal when we're finishing a track? Like, uh, when we're happy with it, you know, what are some tips I would give? So definitely listen to it in mono. And you can do that by bringing this here. It's great to listen to it in mono to make sure that you can hear the lead, you can hear the kick, because if the lead is all of a sudden gone and all you hear is some hiss, then you have a way too wide type of track. Uh, Maurice West talked about that as well, how he would abuse it so much stereo width. And many of the guys now don't do that. They, they don't throw on like an imager right in these mixer tracks. Instead, they use panning and, and better techniques to create more width because if your mix is too wide data will be lost it won't be heard in a mono system i'll plug in an example that i did with my old track lmfao party rock anthem remix and there's a part where the synth is not heard in mono because it's that wide there was a phasing issue <laughs> so let's just talk about what steps I take when I'm doing the mix. What's the overall objective with the mix? So there's just so many ways of looking at this, but overall, like I'd say the kick needs to be very strong. The kick needs to punch through the mix. Your drums are super important. Kanye West, Travis Scott, all the EDM guys talk about the importance of your kick drum. Ollie James talks about the importance of the kick drum. Armin Van Buren talks about the importance of the kick drum. Um, now, you might be wondering, well, why is your kick doing 0 dB? But don't worry about 0 dB. It's just a ceiling. So I could go ahead and take all of these, right, and bring them down minus 4. And now my kick is at 4, like minus 4 decibels. So I'd say just find like a ceiling. So like if your kick is the loudest, make sure that nothing is louder than the kick. So if you're going to say, okay, the kick is minus like, 5 dBs. Let's play it back. Got to be careful here because uh, if you're doing a send, you don't want to bring both down. Be careful about that. And rather now, I would just boost 4 extra gain in the master. So it won't matter. Like if you like to listen to your kick at zero dB, do zero dB. If you like to do your kick at like minus four, do it at minus four. If you like a loud kick, then watch my video about that mastering trick, how I put a, like you could do this, right? You could just crank up like four extra gain 
and you brought everything down minus four and it'll still sound the same. So ultimately it's up to you where you wanna set that C-Link and you can set that C-Link whether it be right in the instrument or the sample itself or post. These are the post output sliders. And uh, let's really talk about the, the, the mix down approach. There are some strategies I would talk about, but I don't wanna make this video too long. Mastering and mixing can get really too long. I'd really focus on if you guys are early into production, keep working on more music. Keep looking at what people do in their productions, in their samples, in their reference tracks, and ultimately curve a lot of space out for the kick. You know, if even if it's something like your drop clap, like this uh, is a clap for the drop, I have it rolled off around 196, which is pretty aggressive. It could probably be rolled back a bit less to keep the punch, but every time it's different. Um, a general recommendation I'd give is like, if you're cutting something out for the kick, maybe around 120 hertz and beyond, 120 or 150 for the lead. Um, toms is a bit tricky, toms, because they need that low end, but when you cut the low end, they lose a lot of power. So there's no right or wrong answer with tom drums. With hats, cymbals, I usually roll off around the 300 hertz. Uh, and with effects, it, it really differs with effects because they're effects at the end of the day. They're very dynamic. But with effects, usually around 1000 hertz if it's like white noise or, or even higher. And all of these will make sure that you have a lot more space for your low end, for your bass drum. And so uh, this has kind of been just a whole array of, of tips uh, for, for your mix down. But ultimately, guys... Uh, you should be making mix down choices and doing leveling during the production. For instance, if we go here, like check this out. I'm going to play back some, some elements here. All right, there's this too. Ambience. On their own, right? Like they're, they're not nothing crazy on their own, but all of these... Trust me, all these, when you make those like volumes, like really low volume uh, choices and you put them back in the mix, when they add up and you choose the right samples, it just, it sounds great because on their own, these are not that great. This is simple impact. And then we have, what else? This. But when we play this back together, it all sounds congruent. And that's, I think that's the differentiating factor between like a better producer and a very novice one is that a very novice one it sounds like they just threw samples in together and just rendered it a better producer will make sure that those samples transition to each other very well so let's just play this transition now imagine if I remove this, 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 demon lady, even this, I have some rain going on. It's from Ali and Adam's signature sounds, free sample pack. It's that shameless plug. And I remove this reverse. Reverses are very important. Like now we just have impacts, right? And someone might just be like, okay, I have impacts. Watch this. It's going to lose all its transition power. You know, okay, it's, it's cool. But like those elements help transition. Effects are great at helping transition your track from one bar to the next bar. To wrap things up, guys, um, there's really no correct answer for your mix down. If it sounds good to you, put it out there. Get some feedback from other people. Send the track out to me. Message me on Instagram. Um, if you're looking at like your loudness, how loud should the track be? I'd say EDM, you know, go for like around minus seven RMS. If you go a bit higher, it, it, it's it's getting like loud and proud. You can still go to like minus six and a half, six, five. There are tracks that go that high, but um, there are consequences that come with it. You know, it does cause more ear fatigue and reduces the likeliness that someone's going to always listen to it over and over because they're just so loud. And I love loud music. Don't get me wrong, but 
um, ultimately loud doesn't equal good just because it's loud doesn't mean it's good and a lot of times we fool ourselves into thinking that oh it sounds better now but it's just louder so ultimately guys there's just so many different ways of approaching doing a mix down but please make sure you guys are doing mix down choices at every level of your track because ultimately you're the one that adjusts everything right think of a painter you know they don't adjust the color of this at the very end and adjust the color of that at the very end, they're thinking, okay, you know what? I want this shade of green. Oh, that green is too powerful. A little bit light green there. You know what I mean? They're painting it as they go. And um, just some mastering tips for the very end. I did automate FabFilter Simplon right before the drop. It's a uh, really cool filter plugin and Loopers does the same thing. Uh, right before the right before the impact of the drop, I did like a quick roll off 120 hertz and then bam, nothing. So if you want like a cool little extra tip, that was a really cool tip. I'll probably make a video on that. Um, I don't always put like all these weird plugins on, but I felt like I wanted to give some color to this master and EQ can really give some color. So uh, I did also do this. This is a general something I would recommend doing a linear phase EQ roll off a bit of the lows and the highs. Um, I did throw on this T-Rex one, which gave it a bit more color. So it gave it kind of like a little bit more bass punch. A I didn't use the width. I didn't want to mess with the width that I already had. And a little bit more of like lower end body and air. This is kind of like a colorizer and, and can push dynamics. But I just used it to boost a little bit of the transients and the colors. And then I used the classic clipper, which you know you guys know I love this plugin. It's like a just a slamming limiter. And then I also used this guy as well. There are other plugins that can help you guys as well. I'll make a separate video on a track on a plugin like Master Match, which Master Match can help you guys use a matching EQ to make your tracks similar to another one. But ultimately, just throw on a limiter on your master. Focus on getting that track sounding good. And if you want your kick to be at zero dB, do it because you can always reduce the levels afterwards. There's so many ways of doing it. There's no 100% right way and 100% wrong way. So I hope uh, some of what I explained can help you guys out. Um, um, the gentleman did, did ask about toms and rides and stuff, but there's just so much that can be done for various reasons. Like I even did something weird here. You see this balance bass? That is for the bass because rather than <laughs> I got so lazy that instead of putting the a different velocity notes for the bass because I was having a problem with it in massive because I didn't automate the velocity in massive. Instead, I did some lazy trick where uh, this, I believe, something is, is automating the uh, volume. There you go. You see minus 10. So what that is doing is this. Uh, let's play it back, just the bass. Watch this when I turn it off. And on. It gets a... It has like a groove to it. So let's play this back with the kick. And no. So you see how like someone wouldn't typically use Fruity Balance for that method. But there, again, like there's so many ways and you can just like... Here, I didn't even use this one. I, I, I was like, hey, should I reduce it more? So ultimately, guys, here your ears are your best asset. Take time, have an open mind, and uh, stay in contact with me, guys. I'm going to be making videos in the future where I do like feedback streams. Let me know if you guys would enjoy watching that where you guys can email me your tracks, and I'll give you guys some feedback directly in the video on ways to improve your tracks. If you guys made it this far, thank you so much for your time. I hope you guys enjoyed this. That's a wrap for this video. Be sure to smash up that like button. Uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We're getting close to 600. I'm gonna be doing like a nice juicy sample pack to give away to you guys at 1000 subscribers. And uh, I love you guys. Thank you for everything. Thank you for checking out this video and I will see you guys soon. Take care.